A five-year-old male with no past medical history is brought into the emergency department by his mother. There's a family history of sickle cell disease. Through his mother, you learn that he has been experiencing pain in multiple joints and he's had intermittent fevers. On physical exam, you note the following as depicted in figure one below. So you can see that picture just below the question. Which of the following receptors is responsible for the binding and infectivity of the causative disease? And there you see the picture of what you see on physical exam. So A, red blood cell P antigen, B, CD21, C, CXCR4, D, ICAM1, or E, nicotinic acetylcholine receptor. Pause the video if you would like to think about this question. And if you're ready, then I'm going to start to break down how you should approach this question. So when you see a question like this, the first thing that you should ask yourself is what disease is the question alluding to? So what disease does this question want you to recognize? And then once you recognize what disease the question is alluding to, you can then look through the answer choices and try to figure out which receptor that disease uses. Now, when you ask yourself, what disease is this question alluding to, you're gonna to have to recognize buzzwords in the clinical vignette. And all of these diseases have very specific and particular buzzwords. After all, this is USMLE and COMLEX, and there can't be any type of controversy in the question stem. So it has to have one very clear answer. So if we go back to the question and we highlight some buzzwords, this is what you should be paying attention to. So pain in multiple joints, so that's a polyarthropathy, and intermittent fevers. In addition to that, the two red arrows pointing to figure one show you the red cheeks. So if you're looking at this question now, after I've highlighted these buzzwords for you, maybe you're starting to generate a differential in your head. And whether it's the red cheeks, the intermittent fevers, the polyarthropathy, or even the fact that I threw you a bone and said that there's a family history of sickle cell disease, you should start to be thinking about parvovirus B19, also known as the disease or the, the pathogen that causes erythema infectiosum, which causes that slapped cheek appearance. So what figure one is showing you is the buzzword slapped cheek appearance, and this classically occurs in children. So now the question is, is what receptor does parvovirus B19 use to bind and infect a host? And the answer is A, the red blood cell P antigen, because again, we're talking about parvovirus B19. Now I know what you're thinking. You're saying to yourself, Dirty, how the hell was I supposed to know that parvovirus B19 binds to red blood cell P antigen? And my answer to that is, well, you, something that unfortunately you have to memorize because this is fair game for USMLE and COMLEX. But let's pretend that you had no idea. How would you have gotten this question right? The way that you should approach this question if you want to take USM, USMLE and COMLEX like a high yield test taker should is to work backwards. So if we look at the question, let's look at the answer choices. A, red blood cell P antigen, B, CD21, C, CXCR4, D, ICAM1, and E, nicotinic acetylcholine receptor. So basically the way to approach this question and the way to work backwards if you're not sure what the actual answer is, is to look at the answer choices. So I'm, I have these blue arrows pointing to the other answer choices and ask yourself, what are these receptors associated with? What connection can I create between the answer choices and diseases that I actually know? So if you look at these, what you should recognize are that these receptors link up to the following diseases. So CD21, is what Epstein-Barr virus or EBV binds to. CXCR4 is one of the actually three receptors that HIV binds to. ICAM1 is what rhinovirus binds to. And the nicotinic acetylcholine receptor is what rabies binds to. So now the question is, is if we're working backwards and you are able to, in your head, you know, you remember from your studying that for example, ICAM-1 is implicated in rhinovirus, you then have to go back to the clinical vignette and the question and ask yourself, did they give me enough buzzwords to point me in the direction of Epstein-Barr, of HIV, of rhinovirus, or of rabies? 
So the way that you should think about this is what would they have had to put in the question if they wanted me to, to think of these four diseases? So let's run through that briefly. If they wanted you to pick Epstein-Barr virus, they would have given you an older child. They wouldn't have given you a five-year-old because Epstein-Barr virus, which is kind of referred to as the kissing disease, is classically associated with the kind of high school or college-aged uh, person because it's spread through saliva and therefore it's oftentimes uh, transmitted through kissing. So they're not going to give you a five-year-old if they want you to pick Epstein-Barr virus. They would also probably allude to posterior cervical lymphadenopathy. They might talk about hepatosplenomegaly. They would probably, if they were going to show you a picture, they would maybe give you tonsillar exudate or palatal petechiae. And the other thing is that they could have shown you a peripheral smear with atypical lymphocytes. But in this question, because none of this was mentioned and the picture was the slapped cheek appearance, they were saying, hey, it's not Epstein-Barr virus. So therefore, it's not the receptor that goes with Epstein-Barr virus. What about HIV? If they wanted you to think HIV, they're going to give you an older patient. It's not going to be a kid. HIV will never, ever, ever be a kid on USMLE or Comlex. I would be so surprised if they actually did that. It's going to also talk about other associated disease states where you get opportunistic infections. So everything that's associated with HIV, you know, all the opportunistic infections that it can um, uh, that can happen when your immune system is completely destroyed, that's what they're gonna talk about in the clinical vignette. But in this vignette, they show you the slap cheek appearance, they give you a polyarthropathy and intermittent fevers. And that's not specific enough to opportunistic infection, and therefore it's probably not HIV. The other thing is they're gonna give you patients that are high risk for transmission of HIV. And they'll give you other symptoms of acute retroviral syndrome. And because none of this showed up in the vignette, it's obviously not HIV, and therefore it's not CXCR4, which is one of three receptors that HIV binds to. Rhinovirus is the causative agent for the common cold. And in the common cold, they're going to show you rhinorrhea, malaise, cough, sore throat. And while this can kind of sound similar to parvovirus B19 to some extent, there's never going to be a slap cheek appearance. So if you see a picture with two red cheeks and a little kid, it's not the common cold. It's parvovirus B19. And the receptor that rhinovirus binds to is ICAM-1. So because it's not rhinovirus, it's not ICAM-1. And then rabies, if we conclude with rabies, they're going to give you some mention of contact with animals. Or if they don't explicitly talk about contact with animals, they'll give you somebody who is either traveling or in the woods or hiking or has some environmental exposure that you could then take one step further and infer that they may have come in contact with animals. But in this question, they're giving you a five-year-old male, and there was no mention of anything that could have possibly had to do with animals. If they want you to think rabies, they might also talk about hydrophobia, about autonomic dysfunction, and then your classic neurologic sequelae like par paralysis or seizures. Again, our question stem didn't talk about any of this. So it's not rabies, and therefore it's not the nicotinic acetylcholine receptor that rabies binds to. So if we come back to our question, here's what we've got. So to summarize, five-year-old male, family history of sickle cell, slap cheek appearance, fevers, and polyarthropathy. So you should think parvovirus B19. Parvovirus B19 binds to the red blood cell P antigen, and that's how it sort of infects the host. Now, again, if you didn't know that, but you knew that the question was talking about parvovirus B19, you could have reasoned through this and worked backwards and asked yourself, well, is CD21 associated with parvo? No. It's not. It's associated with Epstein-Barr. Is CXCR4 associated with Parvo? No, it's not. It's associated with HIV. Is ICAM-1 associated with Parvo? No, it's rhinovirus, or so the common cold. And is the nicotinic acetylcholine receptor associated with Parvo B19? No, it's associated with rabies. And now if you think about it, Epstein-Barr, HIV, rhinovirus, and rabies all have their own very unique buzzwords and clinical pictures and none of that was given to you in this vignette. So that is how you approach these questions. That is how you need to think on test day. If you get to a question and you feel like you don't know the answer, start to look at the answer choices and work backwards. That's it, guys. This is a high yield one. Please know the receptors that these diseases bind to. Please also remember to check out my Patreon account. Click the link in the description of this video. Please sign up and support my channel. 
Whether you do or don't, I'm gonna to continue to make videos, but if you think about the hundreds and thousands of dollars that you could spend on other really shitty resources, the fact that this is free, you know, I would really appreciate if you could support the channel. Thank you, and good luck.